So, welcome to the stream, everyone. This is uh, Fluid Perception, episode one. Uh, we have a few topics ready for you guys here today that we hope to go over and hope you enjoy. Um, so first off, we just kind of want to go over what we are. And so, um, I think the idea that we had kind of going into this was a sort of platform for people to share their opinions and have them be discussed with us, whether that's in person or you just give us the topic and we discuss it ourselves. Um, I, the, I think like what kind of got us into this in the first place was both me and Tristan here like to debate a lot. And even when we agree on the same topics, we also like to play devil's advocate. And we just thought it would be great, a great way to talk about literally any topics people recommend to us or that we want to discuss ourselves and just kind of bash on it on both sides and support and against or opposition of said topic. <laughs> yeah. I think um, the other thing that we wanted to do a lot was it seems like today there's a lot of people who are like only one sided on topics. And so we wanted to like, provide a place where people can like give the other side of like an agreement because obviously me and taylor like you said like we agree on a lot of things so there's not going to be like the other side and that's why we decided to do like a stream in youtube format uh, podcast where like anyone can come on our stream and like say something in the comments or like even we can even invite them on and like talk to them to get the other side so i think another big part of it is allowing people to really round out their thoughts including us like, I, I think me and Taylor both, <clears throat> we're kind of big fans of, like, talking and learning new things, and that's why we talk so much, probably, is, like, we want to see, like, different sides of all opinions, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, like, one idea that we have with it is because we're, we're streaming it on Twitch, but then we hope to just upload them, I'll upload these streams <laughs> to YouTube so people can watch them. Um, one th the nice thing about streaming them is we hope that people who are watching, as we are discussing a topic, they can bring up points that are points on the topic. So say if we're discussing something on politics and we either say something you agree with or disagree with and you just want to bring up a point for that topic, we can see that in the chat and answer it live with you there watching it. Um, another thing is you can also just offer topics that you want to hear discussed like one idea that we have with it is we're hoping um we're hoping that if say if you're at home and you come up with like a cool idea you know like those shower thoughts that people have and you come up with this like cool argument or idea based on a topic but you don't have anyone that you don't have anyone nearby to kind of bounce that off of um, you can bring that up to us, whether you want to talk to us personally live and have that discussion with us, or if you just want to offer that <clears> idea <throat> or topic and me and Tristan can play both devil's advocate and support it. Even if, even if we're against it, we'll play on the defending side, like the pros and cons of the idea. That way you can get it and see if it holds up. Um, but at the same time, you know, like we're not scholars or anything. It's just, it's simply a way for people who don't have a voice to share their voice too and so that's bro that's we're, like we're, pretty, we're pretty scholarly i'd say <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah <laughs> the only book i've read is uh the bible so <laughs> yeah you got through like what page 100 or something <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah yeah but like to go with that I, like i think the biggest thing to go along with like what you said is um, like a lot of like podcasts and like, especially news networks, like they only bring in like certain people, like either experts, they don't ever, it seems like bring in normal people to like talk. And so that's kind of, that was really our goal is like bring in normal people to talk to us, to have like good ideas. And like with that, like our topics are super random. Mm -hmm. Like we talk about anything from politics to like business to like, I don't even know. I, I swear, like, every day, Sports. every day we, like, talk like, like, something random. Like, we'll come up with, like, random, weird, ph philosophical ideas that probably don't make any sense, but we talk about them for, like, hours and hours, so. Yeah. Um, like, some topics that we've, like, to dis we've delved into plenty of times in recent years is, like, existential things. Like, um, 
both of me and Tristan, uh, or I, I'm going to speak on Tristan's behalf, but he can deny it if he wants. Um, both of us are religious in the sense of beliefs. Like, uh, I'm on my behalf, I believe in a higher being, higher power, but I'm not too keen on church, I would say. I, I support church. I think it's a wonderful thing, but I'm not... I'm not one of the, I'm not like a, I want to describe myself as a fanatic or anything. And I actually like to challenge my beliefs constantly. And we, we always, whenever we say like a new, a new challenge arises for religion or something like we, me and Tristan have always ba um, talked about that, or we even like to theorize things like what if um, the universe started or like, you know, those like weird theories, like what if there's a whole universe in your fingernail, like. Yeah, or yeah, we yeah. our entire universe could be on the eyelid of some giraffe for all we know you know like those type of yeah. things we always we always like to delve way deep into those and so and then we can be something simple like we're we get in arguments about lebron james or something like that you know so <laughs> you know the the scale of importance or uh the scale of its vastness it, it can vary a lot and yeah. um but yeah we we really hope that people are engaged with us our viewers like we we just want to see that engagement and that's kind of why we're doing this is because as much as me and him can talk to each other we'd like to have people who disagree with us talk with us because um, for the most part i'd say we're very open-minded on our on what we deem to be true and we have a lot of or i like i mean i can say i have quite a lot of supporting I want to say facts per se. Um, I don't know if that would be the right word, but I have a lot of supporting top evidence, evidence topics or like experiences oh, yeah, for yeah. Wh yeah. why I believe something um, or why I hold a certain viewpoint higher than others. Um, and I would I would love to be challenged on that. And why I say we're open minded is because I've had my views shift constantly i've constantly been put in my place and um i think that's the nice thing though about this too is how we're gonna how it's kind of a place to like our goal isn't if we debate with someone or debate with each other it's not in a rude way like one thing with social media it seems like is everyone's so quick to insult and put you in your place that it's never a healthy debate or disagreement and yeah, we don't yeah, I think we're really big on having that a healthy yeah. a healthy uh argument per se, even with strangers we don't know. And so I think yeah. that that would be something really cool. Yeah, we're we're pretty keen on like we almost I'd say like Taylor and I we like kind of want people to like who disagree to come in and like try to change our minds just cuz it if anything, even if it doesn't change our mind, it just adds another level of knowledge to like a topic. And, like, hopefully we get into, like, topics that are maybe not talked about a lot on, like, news or maybe that just seems super one-sided. Like, whether it's, like, like racism in the United States or, like, I don't even know, like, sex trafficking. I don't even care. Like, just things that maybe aren't talked about as much as they should but should be. And there might even be topics that, like, me and Taylor just don't know a lot about. Like, like actually, sex trafficking is probably a big one. Like, I'm, I'm not super knowledgeable on it. But, like, heck, I'd have a... 20 30 minute conversation on it with someone who actually knew because it'd be sweet and yeah. like again we're not we're, again we're not looking we're not looking for like scholars because we're nothing near scholars ourselves so but i like, mean if you're a scholar by chance feel yeah, free yeah. To... <laughs> yeah if, if jordan peterson's watching this uh shout out uh you can come on anytime <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so, yeah yeah like kind of what you were saying uh like one nice thing too um it's actually a topic we're going to discuss here hopefully near the end of the episode um is is kind of about it's about opinions um one thing that i hope this allows is for people even if they don't if they're not a part of that topic that we're gonna share or discuss um that they're aware that they can still voice an opinion on it and i feel like that's a very big thing is people from outside of the problem even though they don't have that experience they at least have some like I feel like they have a, they almost have a duty to share an, an opinion on it in a way. 
um, not to make light of it or anything, but like, um, say there's a, like an example I would try and use, I don't know if it would be a good one. Um, say you have like a small town community and there's problems going on in it and people from the big city 40 miles away are looking into those problems and they're giving, they're telling, they're trying to help that community. But then the community is like, Hey, you don't live here. You, you, you can't say anything. Um, therefore like they don't get that outside help that they need i think that's one thing we want to convey here is that there there is a, a good like there's something good about um there's something positive about that outside help or that outside view whether or not it's going to be like a hundred percent like oh that's the answer we need it's just it's simply like that way that view is there like whether so the people in the com within that small community can at least take from outside the world from outside their little bubble to see it um and like i guess what i want to get at that is as tristan was saying he we we want people who are versed in topics that we aren't to talk with so we can learn that and share that knowledge with people um one thing that i can i can see is just the way social media is and um if i'm wrong about this i'm wrong about it but both both me and you we're not, like we're not minorities and so if ever a topic about minorities comes up um it's, it's just it's gonna be kind of hard for us to want to share that opinion just because of that uh negative viewpoint on that outside presence sharing an opinion yeah. and um not that not that we want to make light of what happens in those situations or anything but simply being like yeah. we we do still want to voice an opinion that can be heard whether or yeah. not you know just and actually for that matter like um well we'll well i hope that we can have some friends who are in those situations talk about them like say yeah. if we had like one thing i know is we'll probably talk about in the future is say about like riots and stuff and I hope we can have people who have experienced that or who believed in that to talk with us. Um, yeah. Because I'm both in support of them and I'm also against them. But that's just, but at the same time, like, I'm, I'm not a part of them. So who am I to be able to say yeah, or share an opinion on them? But that's why yeah. we want to do that. And that's what I was trying to get at earlier is just simply, like, no, yeah. there's there's something positive about an outside opinion, even though they're not yeah. directly linked to it. And I feel like that shouldn't go blindly to those people that it's being uh, portrayed to, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think another thing that actually you were getting at too that are, that uh, goes along like with what we're doing is um, kind of how you're saying about like if we were taught to talk about like uh, something to do with like race or something in the United States, we're like obviously not minorities ourselves, but uh, the opinion we have might be not a popular one, but I think it's just as like important to talk about the opinions that might not be the most popular, but to like still voice them. So like if we happen to like me and Taylor have a very popular opinion on something, but someone doesn't, uh, I hope like no one's afraid to like come on and be like, well, actually I think this way. Cause again, I don't think me and Taylor mm -hmm. are like the type of like, throw an idea under the bus. Yeah. And that just cause well, it's it's dumb first of all to like just get under the bus unless it's just like in unless it like leads to I guess like killings of people or like something <laughs> super violent. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. That's... It's it's kind of like we we don't want to make light of the tragedies or travesties that are happening. Yeah. It's simply yeah. like we just want to share opinions and how hell we might be sharing an opinion that those people agree with the people in that um scenario or bubble that we're talking about it might yeah. what we're talking about might hit a chord with them that is both positive or negative and that's that's what we want not like this can be seen by people that it, it's with ill intent like um like a common thing i always see with like public speakers and stuff is people feel like they're trying to spread their ideology around um I, I don't think that's what we're trying to do. I don't think we're, or I believe we're not trying to convince people to believe what we believe. We're simply discussing, and you know, like yeah. I, I'm as we mentioned earlier in 
at the beginning of this, like I, we're both religious, but we're not going to sit here and try and convert you to religion. If the topic of religion comes up, we're solely going to talk about it, not try and convince you yeah. that it's true or it's not true. I don't think that's fair for us and it's not fair for the viewers because um, it's simply like, it's like a way to see it is like we're laying it out like a map. Like we're just mapping yeah. out the topic and we leave it open for you to interpret it interpret it interpret <laughs> interpret interpret <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we leave it to you to interpret how you want to interpret um and i think that's kind of like the beauty of or like that's kind of our big inspiration too and that's why we want other people to talk with us so their voice can be heard and if they disagree or agree on something like even like that's even better you know like that I think the biggest thing that we're gonna want and rely on is for you guys to voice your opinions to us and yeah. join in on it. So like one thing is um, we'll probably, we don't think we'll do a video with you per se, unless like you're a trusted friend of ours cause we don't want some dude doing, <laughs> we, we don't want anything wrong going on in the stream, but um, yeah. <laughs> like, you can join in on these calls with us and we'll have your voice connected and you can talk to us live on the stream and that way everyone can see it too, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, we hope to keep this as positive as possible and we hope for that positive negative to be a part of it, you know, like a healthy negative to it. So like if there's those disagreements, as I said, we hope that it's a healthy disagreement. Um, we just want to keep it as open-minded and beneficial to both us and the viewers and we just hope that you guys as a community are very involved with us because that would be awesome yeah yeah, um, yeah that's a that's that's actually a, another thing like uh not to be repetitive but uh like something i think i see at least that uh, i'm not a huge fan of especially like in news and even discussions like public speakers and stuff seems like they always have a certain bias that they seem to convince you of. And that's like, especially specific with like news is they're always trying to convince you of like one thing. And that's like, not something Taylor and I are trying to do. Like he was saying, like, we don't have a ideology that we're pushing. Although like we might have like, we might have bias, which uh, I mean, I'll admit like I have bias. I'm sure. I, well, I know Taylor has bias, but <laughs> um, I might, I'll, I definitely have bias and I've probably been biased before, like <clears throat> and tried to thing, but that's something I think we're working on and hopefully this will help us more than it helps it probably will help us more than it helps anyone but that's another thing we hope to like achieve with people watching and interacting with us is to be less biased and more like well-rounded and have better idea of things so exactly anyway um yeah like something to continue off with that i would say yeah um sorry i'm trying to think of how to word it It'd be kind of like, like, I think one thing that people underestimate is that power of empathy or putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And so when it comes to like that bias, it's kind of a, we hope to provide a point of view that you may not have thought of before, or for us to delve into a point of view that you as say the victim or just a person experiencing said topic, we hope to enter your point of view and view what's go that topic from your perspective or your understanding um, yeah. and get your <laughs> or, perception of it, you know? Yeah. Or even to like dive into a view more, like if you don't understand a view or if like, if you clearly don't know a view to like dive into that view or if we don't know a view to like have you dive into it for us, so we clearly understand the view better if that makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cause like, as I was saying, like with that, empathy you know like i i i pers i feel like it's a very powerful tool like emotional tool that people are able to access um like if a friend's telling you a, tra a tragedy that they went through you if you if you're a pretty empathetic person i believe um it's something that i i tend to do and that's why i'm able to re even though i've never say gone through an atrocity that the said friend has gone through how I'm able to relate to it is I, in my head subconsciously, you could say, um, I'm not that big of a psychologist. I don't know what exactly is going on, but, um, I would say subconsciously my head is 
going through all these memories, these tragic moments, these, this trauma that I've been through, and I dealt, take that trauma and I put myself, then I put myself in my friend's situation and I see it from their perspective and then I add that trauma to it so I can see how the, so I can get a grasp of that feeling that the said friend is going through. And I think that's a very powerful tool that we as humans have. And it's, that's how so many people are able to um, relate to each other, even though they may have never gone through it. And I think that's where a lot of our opinions are going to stem from too, is we're going to try and put ourselves in your shoe in those people's shoes and see how, see what they're going through. So like any topic, any like controversial thing too, even if it's a controversial subject that we're against, we're going to still try and see it against or see it from the perspective of those we're against and the nice thing too about that empathy is there there is a lot of feeling and emotion involved and there's the kind of that popular saying is uh that facts don't care about your feelings but you can't rule out feelings in any subject you know like a person feels what they feel in a subject and so we hope to grasp that as best we can and that's why we hope that you as viewers again engage with us so especially if it's a topic that pertains to you so that we can everyone as an audience can get that pr perspective that sense of emotion from each topic too um i hope all that made sense because I, I don't know if it was a straight line or if you were totally confused as to what i was saying but um, no no I, I think that made sense it made sense okay we'll have to go back and watch it see what it sounded like <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, yeah, for the most part, I mean, that, that's what we hope to do and accomplish with this. And we hope it's something that other people want to see happen as well. And so, um, I mean, is there anything else you have to add for what we want to, what we hope to achieve here? Um, I, I think we, I think we pretty much went over it. I think if like anyone has questions about like what we're doing, um, you can obviously ask us, like ask us any, literally any question, say whatever you want to us. We really like literally don't care what you say to us. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, th I think, I think that was a pretty good explanation of like what we are, what we're doing. So, yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, um, again, just to wrap that up, that was just kind of what we, what we're about, why we decided to do this and what we hope to accomplish. Um, we hope that strikes a positive chord with you guys and it's something that you want to see more of um so now to kind of delve into our first real topic here uh i believe the topic we have ready to discuss is video games and it really can be anything about video games but particularly video games and violence and how that's kind of been a controversial thing through recent years or i've seen it pop up in recent years i mean um i, I remember being like in middle school playing halo or something and i've had like older relatives be like you're really playing this violent game are you sure you're allowed to and it's like ah my parents don't care <laughs> you know like <laughs> i was all for it <laughs> um yeah but yeah that that's what we're gonna hope, try and dive into right now i don't know if, uh i feel like i don't have the mental capacity to do, dive into anything yeah. right now but like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we waited it all on our intro <laughs> yeah um, yeah this, i think this is that like you said like this is kind of a topic that's i think it's kind of like stereotyped against like people who like play video games especially like violent ones like and you see it in the news a lot like whenever there's like a shooting or something especially like school shootings like it seems like someone has to bring up like oh they're probably played video games or video games leads into violence mm -hmm. and so yeah um, the yeah I, that one shooter was Prestige Six in Call of Duty. <laughs> that... Yeah, exactly. Some stupid, <laughs> yeah. Like... Some stupid connection yeah. to put the blame on video games because I mean, people look for blame when those travesties happen, and it's it's nothing to. It's not that we're. It's like, without that blame, it's just uh, you feel lost. You know, like why did this happen and you don't have that answer so um i feel like video games is just an easy explanation or something easy for people to blame yeah yeah at the same time though like i i could see why people like bring it up i just think 
I think it's kind of silly, honestly. Like, like you said, it's like just something for people to blame and everyone's looking for something to blame. But at the same time, like I can see why people see it as that because with like the violence involved in video games, it could be like a sign of like your psychological side, maybe wanting to be more violent, which I think is probably part of like the psych a lot, the psyche of humans. I don't even know if that was the right word, but I, I probably assume that humans are programmed to be on the violent side. Um, so yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean like a bunch of like say shooters and stuff. It's always been like them lashing out. Like it's a form of them lashing out that they, they've gotten so deep or secluded from their society or from like even friends, people who they should be con- social with they've been secluded from them or the and it's either self seclusion or that the people treated them bad and they pushed them away and you see that happen a lot um there is one i i I believe it's the columbine shooters like they were they both writ wrote like i don't know if you could say autobiography or not but they both wrote um i want to say transcript I, I know that's not the word, but they, they both wrote their reason for doing it. And it wasn't that they went through, or from what I recall from it, it wasn't that they went through some traumatic, like, bullying ex- um, experience like you'd see in, like, TV. Like, uh, it wasn't something traumatic like, say, the Netflix shows 13 Seasons right, Why the Tyler kid gets just just beat on and beat on constantly. It, I, it wasn't something like that. It was more like as I had mentioned earlier, like a seclusion in a way, like they didn't feel included yeah. with those people, you yeah. know, like they, yeah. they felt almost like they were in, I would say um, they felt almost like animals compared to their peers. Like their peers viewed them as animals and they believed it themselves because of it. Um, and truly, I think one thing that could help is if we look this up, but um like they they wrote some dark things and why they were doing it like they they wish that they could just end the entire world if they had the power to like they wrote if they had the power to they would do as much damage as possible before dying and it wasn't a matter and like they did kill themselves in the end but it wasn't a matter of just suicide it was they wanted to deal as much damage to the world as was the damage dealt to them um uh, again i I can't say that's the exact quote. This is more stuff that I'm com- that I'm remembering just off the top of my head, but um, just they wrote some dark things uh, before yeah. committing that atrocity, and I, it's something that you see in every like single person that has committed atrocities. I mean, um, like people, like just the mindsets people have when they go into doing that is. It's not something that you can simply put blame to on like something has video games. I mean, it almost, I, I, it's not that simple. I believe I, I, it's something far deeper than just their psychosis. Um, like Joseph Stalin, for instance, with the Soviet Union, even though they fell and collapsed and we didn't end up going into all out nuclear war, it's what he wanted to do. He wanted to burn the entire world and it's just like at the expense of his own life like it was it just people want to see such travesty like they they view humanity as such a like a plague yeah and it's such a terrible thing to imagine humanity as to put us in that category as a cancer i mean you as jordan peterson had said I mean, what do you do with cancer? You eradicate it. And to say that about the human race shows a lot about your character. And I, again, I don't think that that has much implementation from a video game. And I guess you could say like video games, like if you played a certain video game where the antagonist is preaching that, like a video game is preaching that humanity is bad or like the people you go to school with are bad and you take it that in i mean i could see how that could happen but i don't think that's the only reason why that's happening i mean yeah there, there's so much going on too i'm you you could put it as 
you yourself may not be doing anything to keep, put yourself in a better situation. Your friends could probably not be doing anything to help lift you up, which that could go to say your parents not teaching you good morals, though I don't want to quite put the blame on parents, but I think it, there is some blame depending on the age of kids too. I mean, there's that critical point in development in infants, yeah. you know, and toddlers, adolescents. Yeah, I would, say, I would say younger kids playing video games is probably not the Ideal. best thing. Yeah, yeah, because like you're saying, like they're still learning, so like learning them on violent video games prize and like the best idea. So <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I've, I've I've personally played video games as long as I can remember. I know my brothers had like a PlayStation One, and uh, we were playing like Crash Bandicoot. We weren't playing Call of Duty that young. I re I think I first played Call of Duty when I was like seven or eight. And I actually remember doing that with you uh, when we did yeah. <laughs> COD Zombies back in like 2008 yeah. Yeah. or something. Um, yeah. I think that was like the earliest time I started playing violent, like I, games that depicted actual violence. But even before then, I was in love with like violent movies. Like for me, I was like attracted to violence. Um, not in that sense that I wanted to partake in violence, but it was like there something very young in me was attracted to it. Um, like my two favorite movies growing up were Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. And to this day, Lord of the Rings is my all time favorite set of stories that has a deep lore, everything that keeps me attracted to it. But like I, I first fell in love with it because it, of huge armies going to battle. It's just thrilling to me. Um, but like, I mean, I, I did play video games when I was super young. But I have memories yeah. where my dad, one time we were arguing over who played the PlayStation, and my dad said he'd throw out the PlayStation if we kept arguing. And I saw my moment to have power over my older brothers. And so when they didn't let me play, I purposely started fighting with them so that my dad would throw it out, and then they'd let me play so the PlayStation wouldn't get thrown out. You know, like, <laughs> I, 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 I manipulated it pretty bad. Um, but, <laughs> but, like... Yeah. I, I don't think that, like, you see kids today with iPads and iPhone touches, you know, yeah. at, like, seven years old. I didn't even have my first smartphone till sophomore year in high school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, like... Yeah, I think, I think another huge thing with, like, violence in video games is I feel like people think about violence in video games too much of, like, what the video game is versus, like, why people are, like, playing video games, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like for me, like I'm I'm pretty introverted. I don't know. I don't know if you're pretty introverted. You, you're probably a mix, but I'm I'm pretty introverted. And so, for me, playing video games wasn't only like the joy of playing video games. It was like it gave me time to play with like other friends. So like Taylor, for example, like we played a lot of video games together. And like even now, like me and him, we don't live close to each other anymore. So like our our like friendship time or whatever you want to call it is playing video games. And that's like the same with. I think a lot of kids are like that. They use, like, their social time is playing video games. And as, like, bad as that might sound, like, not going outside, it's it's a way to socialize. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, like, I, I go outside. So for anyone out there who tries to roast me, I go outside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always like that saying. It's like, your parents tell you to get off the video games. You're like, I could be going having sex or doing drugs right now. Just let me play my video games, you know? Yeah. Um, I yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, that all the time i use that all the time like, <laughs> like, like in high school like yeah my dad came in or my sister came in, like why are you always on there like i can literally be out like doing drugs smoking drinking doing all this and they they usually leave because it's like <laughs> <real."> <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what to say they're like all right yeah, point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah like for me it wasn't ever like it, it was an escape when i was younger like it was like as I started to get older, a lot of my friends who grew up on the same block or street as me, they all started doing their own thing and branching out. And so I felt more alone than anything. And that's why I retreated to video games in my later years. Um, but like, I remember in high school, video games felt, it got to the point where video games felt like a chore and not like a luxury. It was like, oh great, I'm going to go play video games because I need to pass the time and I'm bored, you know? And then I'd I wouldn't quite enjoy playing the video games, but that's like to the point where I got where video games are just a chore to keep me busy because my friends outside were doing things I either didn't want to partake in or were even more boring than playing a video game to me. Um, like 
I, when I was in school um, at university, friends, like a few friends would always invite me over and we'd just sit on a couch for like three hours sitting on our phones talking and the social part was nice and but like it wasn't enough for me to stay engaged and be like wow I, I went like and go home and be like wow I just spent three hours sitting on a couch I was like I'd rather spend three hours staring at my tv while I play minecraft or something you know and so I yeah. started to like just leave in the middle of those fun sessions and I always felt bad like looking back to it now because like um you know, that was just, that was time I could have spent with those friends. And I, I did get all that time on weekends. Like we'd go to parties and stuff and have a great time. And that was good enough for me. But like those small things, like it was just like, yeah, I'm going to just play video games so that the weekend can come by faster. But yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm in like the same boat. I, I guess I will side with, this kind of goes off violence in video games. Well, I guess it sticks with video games, but probably less violence. But I think like those of you out there who like play a lot of video games i think there's definitely like a limit to like video games like i i've seen kids who play like so many video games that like it's almost like disgusting it's like okay dude like chill out on the video games because i i do think it like i like as much as i don't think it leads to violence i do think it can lead to like other problems i don't know yeah, other problems, like, whether it's, like, definitely, like, social problems. Like, if you could have social issues due to video games. I can definitely see that. Uh, and, like, same way, um, how was I say? Like, academics. Like, your academic career, I think, could definitely be jeopardized because you play too many video games. I, I noticed that from myself, like. Yeah, and I noticed that from myself with, like, my first semester at college. Like, it's definitely, it can definitely be distracting. So you definitely have to, like, manage it. I think it's a manageable thing, but I same time i think it's something that i i'd highly recommend <laughs> <laughs> yeah um like it's a like it like almost with anything too much of something is yeah. not a good thing you know um, yeah exactly kind of how you were saying like it can cause it it kind of affects your social stuff i remember in like middle school uh there's like two kids who would naruto and toe run everywhere <laughs> and it was yeah. always funny to me it was just kind of like i'd Besides the show, but I also at that age, it, didn't, it was fine too. Like looking back, like who was I to judge this? These kids, I was playing army outside every time I went home after school. You know, I'd grab a, yeah. I'd grab like a toy gun and pretend I was playing yeah, army. Yeah, we'd hang out in your treehouse and pretend there were zombies coming at us. And <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so like the imagination, I think that's a fascinating thing too. It's just the imagination kids have, but um, like the the impact it has on your mind i think both video games and television it, it it plays a huge huge role like oh yeah um i i i daydream all the time like i could be in a lecture i could be on a date and i'd be daydreaming of like lord of the rings dude like yeah like she, this girl could be talking about uh the classes she's doing or like what she what her hobbies are and i'm thinking man dude or i'm just picturing like legolas shooting some orcs right now with a bow while she's talking about this i'm like oh sorry what were you saying (laughs) (laughs) um dude is that that why you aren't picking up the ladies lately yeah none of them are legolas you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) um uh But yeah, like, I mean, it has a huge influence on you. And so I, th- I think at a younger age, the vi- I, I don't think video games themselves are that big of a deal at a younger age, but like the violent yeah. ones, like I, I can recall not playing Call of Duty till I was like seven or eight years old, like that type yeah. of violence. But I do remember like doing Halo, like the very first Halo when that came out, um, when I was super young and I'd play that split screen with my older brothers. Um, yeah. But, like, I think one night, like, I, my central point with this that I've been planning to go with um, is kind of, like, the pause, like, to counter video games cause violence. I almost want to say it negates violence in a way. So, mm-hmm. from, like, my personal experience, I'm really into, like, the RPG-like games, like Fallout, Skyrim um witcher like just anything rpg like that role playing and that's kind of like the games that really help me feel that sense of escape from the real world um even though i actually play way more like 
multiplayer games, you know, like Rocket League and stuff. I play those way more than I do the RPGs. But the nice thing yeah. about the RPGs, especially when I was younger, because, um, like, I'd have my one of my friends just down the street every morning before we'd go to, I think as early as intermediate school, like third through fifth grade, that young, I'd have a friend who would come over in the morning before school. So say if school started at eight, he'd come over at 11 or no, <laughs> seven. Um, he would come over at seven and he would just watch me play Fallout 3 every morning. And then we'd go to school and everything. But um, the th nice thing about those R RPG games, the point that I'm trying to get at is it was a way to let that negative side of you or that darkness in you that would otherwise be portrayed in the real world. It was a way for you to let that out or have a handle on it or experience it. Um, because I actually see like, it seems like more of the bullies were those who didn't play video games from my perspective. It seemed like more of the people who I saw as bullies, they were the ones that didn't play video games. And so they didn't have like a way to channel that resentment or that, as I said, like darkness in them. Um, yeah. So like an example would, and like it, it kind of gave, when I like started first kind of realized this, it kind of made me feel a little good about myself. Um, Cause like what I do is say I would play uh, Fallout New Vegas. So in that you have like, you have like the democratic NCR faction you can side with. You have the Caesars Legion you can side with, which are more like, um, I don't want to go so far as to say like communists or anything, but like they were slavers, you know, like they were a very uh, hierarchical faction in that. And then you had um, like the faction that was in between. You just sided with like these robots to kill everyone. Yeah, kill everyone, I guess, or like just take over anyways. Um, and I always saw that NCR, the Democratic faction, I always saw them as the good guys. And to this day, you are like, at an older age, I, I can see how, or I see how both sides have their goods and bads. But as a young age, I just always associated with the NCR as good and the Caesar's Legion as bad. And I remember I would always try, and this was for any RPG game, I would always try to do a bad playthrough where I was evil or something. Like an example is in um, the video game Skyrim, Elder Scrolls. You can side with vampire hunters or be a vampire. And I'd always try to do the vampire. Right? I'd always try to do Caesar's Legion, and I just there would be that fine. There would be the last decisive moment if you commit to doing it, or you can have your, or it's your last chance at redemption to join the good guys. And just uh, I I never could help myself. I would go and join the good guys, and that that's like where I always kind of felt good about myself. Is like I, even in a video game, I just could never go through with being a dark person being a bad person but the other thing right. I, i'm trying to get at is in those video games you know like i expect like say if you have some dark thoughts about someone you dislike you know like say uh timmy's being a bad bully to you and you just um, want to beat him up or something and eh, i'm also i'm also all for for stepping up to your bullies like i think that's something that needs to happen but like don't go <laughs> don't go so dark where you're like ch choking them with chicken wire or something you know <laughs> um, <laughs> but like uh video games i'd go home or something and i would go play video games where i had that power to manipulate the pe people in the video game you know i would shoot their heads off or something like that like it allowed me to harn like harness that darkness and experience it but then because of it it also gave me a sense of control over it in person and i actually think i'm a very pacifist person when it comes to violence because like i never i've always like i've always been very passive pacifist when it when it, in confrontations you know like if i see a way out of not fighting i've always gone that way i'm not yeah. like if someone's trying to square up with me I, it's not that i like back down and walk away i just i i both stand my ground but i also get out of it i i i'm trying to think of the word um <laughs> i'm trying to think yeah. of a word for like a like a discussion you know um 
ch I charm my way out of it, you know, like I, you I talk your way. Yeah, I, I, I just talk my way out of it. Um, sorry, yeah. there, there's some word in my head that I wanted to use, but um, I talk my, I've always talked my way out of it, but I also make sure I don't back off of my ground. Like say if I, um, I guess I would be a bad example. Um, like say if I said something that I didn't mean an offense, but someone was offended and that's probably going to happen in here a lot. Um, but say if I said something that offended a person and like for whatever reason it personally offended them and they were getting, they wanted to like, uh, just duke it out or something. Not that I've really been in those situations, but you know, that tends to happen. If that was to happen to me, I'd, I'm I'll, I won't like back off with what I said, but I'll be like, I apologize and everything. And I say, I don't mean offense or anything, but I wanted to get that point across or something like that. Like I just, I, yeah. I talk my way out of it in a sense. And yeah, I've, yeah. I've managed to do that. And I kind of yeah. gained a lot of that skill or those attributes from playing video games because I, I'm able to control or recess, hold back those dark inclinations. Like, oh, I'm just going to punch this guy while I can, you know, and get the upper hand right away type deal. I've always yeah. been able to hold that back because I I don't see a positive solution out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Half the time it's because people are like twice my size. So if I were to <laughs> punch them, you know, um, it'd probably be over for me. But I've always, I've always wanted or I've always found a way out of it. And so, and I kind of, I, I, like I said, I, I learned those attributes from, video games and i think that's yeah. like a really big positive of video games or even like television like it's because like with television i like to put myself as say the characters in the show so like lord of the rings i would put myself as say aragorn and how he has to stand up for his people and become king even though he doesn't want to like he he doesn't exactly embrace it i would say but like he yeah accepts that um, challenge or accepts and puts on that role so that yeah. there's a better outcome and solution for everyone. And yeah. that's kind of what I like to go for is I just make sure that I don't put myself in a bad situation where people know they have power over me. So I don't back down unless yeah. I know I'm absolutely wrong. You know, like if I bump someone and spilled their drink, I'm, I know I'm wrong. So I'll be like, Hey, I'll buy you a new drink or something, you know? Um, yeah. but like I, I don't back down from my, from my position because that yeah. I do see that as a sort of sign of weakness. If you're not stern enough in your own perceptions, it, people are going to be able to walk over you. And so yeah. you just need to yeah. have those foundations and not back down from them. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm pretty similar. And just to like go off of that, I think another thing that I've, I was like thinking about while you're talking is I think, like a big thing with like the violence and video games topic is people who like learn self-control kind of like you were talking like you had like a lot of self-control and like not going through to the dark with the dark side of you and like going through those factions and stuff that are inherently bad and stuff and i think that's like a big thing is like having self-control with yourself to like realize what you're thinking is bad and i'm not even saying like having bad thoughts is a bad thing like I, i'd say it's totally normal but like us as humans like me and Ted, I'm sure we've had plenty of like bad thoughts about doing something really bad, but it doesn't show an action. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big Charlie, deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's. And a... so. Sorry. Go yeah. Ahead. Um. Go ahead. Yeah, I okay. Think... Well, I was just, I was just gonna say if. Oh my gosh! My bad. Go ahead. Go, ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead. <laughs> go dude. <laughs> go. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, freak, what was I saying? Oh, I was just going to say that, like, I think, like, if there's any, like, younger kids who are watching and, like, they play a lot of video games, I would do it like Taylor does. And, like, I've done that a few times, but I think Taylor has a lot more experience. But, like, do it like Taylor does and, like, put yourself in the shoes of the people you're playing as instead of just looking at, like, the violence for violence or, like, the game for the game like put yourself in like the shoes of like the person that you're portraying and see like what their values are if that makes any sense because like taylor's really good at his self-control i think i have like a little bit of self-control i mean anyone who has a decent amount of self-control knows like 
not to be violent towards innocent people. And I think, I honestly think video games do a good job of showing that, like, you should not be violent towards people who are, like, innocent. Like, almost every video game, I think, you're usually on the good side. And if you choose a bad side, like, Taylor has, if you have that self-control, you just can't go through with it because you're like, this is just, like, wrong type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, a weird way to see it, it might be easier to kind of portray it, or it might not make any sense, but, like, think of it as a even if you go all the way through with the bad side because at an older age i'm able to do it way easier rather than just being like oh this is besides a point of or be besides seeing it as a choice of good and evil is way more complicated because oh, there, yeah. there's like Definitely. that equilibrium and everything um but at an older age i've been able to go through those bad playthroughs far easier than i did when i was younger um but like the nice thing is like the way to kind of see it is say you have say you have like a meter in your character and say it's at 20 percent of being a bad person right and you can release that 20 percent in the real world or you hop in a video game and do the bad things in a video game and then it goes down and so you say you're at five percent when you're off the video game so you go into the real world and that's only built up five percent rather yeah. than have 20 percent in the real world and so you are less likely to let that out that's the way i see it and for all i know yeah. it could be like a oh, hundred yeah, percent wrong think, you know but that that's yeah, like I, the way I, I viewed it yeah i think another analogy that you once brought up to me that i really liked was like with a meter thing i think you i remember you telling me like say you're at like a 20 percent like evil thing like you personally and you're like well i want to see what would happen if i just go to like 40 60 and so like on a video game you can like choose like a faction like you're saying of like just pure evil at 100 percent, and you're like well dang like this is kind of like really weird and obviously immoral and i don't like that so it can like teach you to like not be bad because you've now like lived it in a video game mm -hmm. exactly yeah. and i think it's a way to also def discover yourself especially in that adolescence time because i don't think well i guess it could be controversial and it does depend on the kid and how much like de how good of development they had in their um very early stages of life you know but like yeah for me i don't think i would be as kind of a person if i didn't play video violent video games in my adolescence and that very big stage of growth you know and of maturity like um I, I it was a way for me to both express that anger that a lot of pubescent teams teens go through in a video game type deal you know um i had an idea but i kind of lost it um just simply being like I, I feel like ex give, exposing yourself to that stuff to make those decisions on your own in those video yeah. games where it doesn't have any real world implications can is very beneficial. And yeah. I think that's a very positive part of video games in general. Whether you, yeah. cause you can use video games as both an escape and as a way to build upon yourself or build upon your character, you know, kind of help develop mm -hmm. yourself as a person. Um, it allows yeah. you, it puts you in scenarios that maybe you won't find yourself in until you're in your 30s. And you can, and so when you're in your 30s in that scenario, it's kind of weird to say, but um, you can kind of rely on how you made those decisions back when you were a kid in, in a video game, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. There's, yeah. there's yeah. obviously an attraction to video games, so it's not like a stupid, or I don't think it's a stupid analogy or... Um, point to make because like you can't I, I don't think anyone can deny that video games have a great attraction for people and that yeah. it's not important to your mental health I think it's very, yeah. I think it's very important and I think it's I don't th I like I guess kind of the premise of the whole topic is I don't think video games true can tr truly cause violence in the real world but at the same time, I think it relies a lot on the mental stability of people because for all yeah, we know, yeah. I mean, for all we know, like a shooter or something could easily have been motivated through a video game and then was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to. And I, and that's why people put blame on it. But yeah, I feel like that's such a small central point as well that it can't you can't 
generalized video games as causing violence. Rather, video that video game could have played a just been a small factor into many with many factors of say how the child was treated and how he was welcomed into society. Um, but like, uh, there's one saying I I don't remember who said it. It was like you have to become your monster like you have to find your monster so that way you can recognize it you know? i think it was jordan yeah. peterson um Sounds I, like something you'd say. yeah I, I don't remember the exact saying but it was like you have to be willing to become a monster that way you know your limitations as well and so like if you don't want to cause say harm to people you know in real life and you can implement that in a video game and become a monster in the video game. That way you recognize just your own mental capabilities there, you know, whether yeah, or not you yeah. can, like in a video game, you could be like an actual monster and throw someone like a hundred feet. I don't think you can do that in real life, but like the same implication is there, the choice to do it. And so you can recognize when that threshold. And so I think that's, yeah. that's yeah. an important part of playing those video games. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, obviously, I think there's quite a few studies still going on um, yeah, about it. Yeah, I think there's a lot. Like, uh, one important m version was there's the Texas shooter at Walmart that killed, like, 22 people, and I think 29 were injured. He went and shot up Texas, or not Texas, uh, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> he shot up the whole state. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think he shot up Walmart and the, the, as I said, 22 dead, 29 injured or something. And, uh, people were blaming on video games. Like he made a reference to video games or something. And then, um, but then like in a memoir that he had mm -hmm. or a memento, he put down that it was here. I think I have it actually saved. Um, and then the people can see this, uh, yeah, okay, I do have it. So this is from Dana Foundation, this article, uh, Do Violent Video Games Lead to Violence? Um, and so right here, the long-standing debate over whether violence depicted in video games can trigger real-world violence has taken on renewed vigor in the wake of mass shootings in recent years. The gunman who killed 22 people and injured 24 others at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas on August 3rd made a fleeting reference to video game soldiers indicating that he was familiar with video violence and many politicians were quick to blame video games for this and other mass shootings. Yet it seems clear that the El Paso gunman was primarily motivated by ethnic hatred. His manifesto said the attack was a, quote, a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas, unquote. And so, um, I don't know if I want to bother reading the rest, but that was kind of the point I wanted to make with that. Um, yeah. Just kind of, you know, like, they he showed that connection to video games and that's why people were so quick to blame it. But as he said in that memento that it was due to ethnic hatred. So he was more of a racist and that's why he was doing it, you know? Um, yeah. And so, and it's not like we're trying to make light of that whole situation either, but just kind of that point of the video games part of it. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it has any implication or implementation in, um, making people violent without the fact that there's probably a whole other range of problems that are affecting said person, you know, yeah. like that, that guy, had, yeah, yeah. that guy had, that. I definitely think it's, it's something a lot more than just like video games. Like I, I definitely think it's a lot more psychological and like mental mm -hmm. like, is with that than it is like playing video games. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Um, so you said you don't have any more points to make on that. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I've said everything I want to say about that. If you, if you don't, if you have more, you can go ahead. But otherwise, we can go to our next topic. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't think I have any more. I was just hoping you did, so I could just bounce off you. But. Uh, oh yeah. Well, we. I think we. That was like forty-five minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. True. Um. So. I I hope that was a. Great discussion on that. And if not, leave a comment. Tell us if you disagree or agree. Um, yeah, seriously. Um, but moving on to the next topic, we had cancel culture is what it's called. Or 
like it's a form of ostracism, if that's the right Ostr word. Ostracism, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's and so, right. That's kind of our next topic. This one, I'm hoping you uh, can make more points than I can, because I don't have any like off the top of my head examples besides yeah. like ce celebrities that have been can that have been canceled. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I guess it's not that I have a lot of points, but obviously, cancel culture I think is like a pretty big issue in like society right now because I I feel like it incentivizes too much like not talking, and I think it incentivizes like not. Kind of like what we said in our intro, like we want all kinds of views to come in and talk to us. And I think cancel culture is like a main reason people won't. And so hopefully like people watch this segment and be like, um, oh, well, I can go on and talk without like being canceled or whatever. Because I think cancel culture is a major issue, in especially the United States. And I guess I don't I don't have a lot of like information on other countries, but I assume it's a worldwide thing. And I think it's a huge thing that should be just it shouldn't be cancel culture really it should be it should be more of like having a real discussion about like things that can be potentially harmful especially like even people who have certain views that could harm people and like do like immoral things to people it's not that i don't i think they should be like shut up and like uh, called out but i think it should be something that's not like oh you're canceled like i think it should be like a discussion with like those group of people on like why it's bad yeah and, like more of like, a call out like yeah and, yeah and the other thing is like i i kind of have a belief that like every single view whether it's like no matter how hatred i feel like at the core somewhere there's like a hint of good and so um one thing that like i was wanted to bring up was uh I was watching the new, like, Kevin Hart movie, like, his new, uh, like, stand-up comedy that he did, and it was, like, in his house because of, like, COVID. And for anyone who's seen, like, the original, the first uh, Kevin Hart stand-up one, me and Taylor watched it, and it, it's, like, super funny. Like, it is hilarious. But, like, the new one he did, like, no offense to Kevin Hart, but I didn't think it was all that funny. Just because, like, the whole, a majority of the time he he talked about, like, oh, I'd say this, but I can't say it because I don't want to get canceled. Like, don't cancel me type of thing. And it was like, like we live, we really live in like a society right now where you could say one little thing and like everybody will just hop on your back about it and like try to get you canceled. And like, honestly, I, I hope there's people that like come on and people try to like say, oh, cancel this podcast. Or like we get to the point where like people want to cancel us because it's like why like <laughs> we're, we're, we're simply talking to people like obviously there are people out there that have this opinion why can't we just talk about it like i i'm not a fan of cancel culture i think it's terrible for society i think it's awful for like the psychological state of like humans in general because mm -hmm. it, it just um it incentivizes so much like shutting up like don't talk don't say anything yeah so i i don't know how exactly how well i'll form this point but um there's something about that, like about how they were, Kevin Hart was afraid to be canceled. It's a, uh, there's a quote, I don't know if it was a quote. I just remember the saying, it was like, when, uh, I don't even know what the, what I didn't, like how it was identified, but it was like when a certain group of people start targeting the comedians, then you know your society or like politics or something like, when when the comedians are targeted and being attacked, that's when you know um, something's really going bad. Like that's when you're taking it too far because comedians yeah. are supposed to uh, be funny, like yeah. like joke, and, and it's yeah. like a way to break that stress or just like that tenseness in it. You know, like um, there there's like a common common type of joke people do are racist jokes you know and it's not because they're trying to be racist or that i i think it's because they're not racist you know like i think it's because the reason why people are entertained by them is because they're so anced up about racist things that when the joke happens it's a way to let it out and it's it's like uh like comedy in general it's like it's not to make light of the thing. Like they don't make the racist jokes to make light of what's going on. It's yeah, we're just, to like be it's, it's just yeah. to make it more bearable. 
you know yeah, like exactly. it, it's not um it's not like a matter of um it's like not to take away from the the issue of racism or like yeah. the issue of the issue of whatever like anything like mm-hmm. like, like 9 11 even like not to take away the issue from like 9 11 or like the tragedy that happened yeah but like, like you, there's a lot of jokes on 9 11 and <laughs> i'm trying not to laugh but um like it's it, it's a way to to like get, relieve yourself like, yeah yeah think, it's like a sense of relief it's, it's like think of yeah think of a bunch of steam is in you a bunch of pressure and when you laugh and have a joke about a topic like say there's a bunch of steam about um about the fact that you can't make a basketball hoop you know and then someone in a friendly way makes a joke about it and you laugh about it it just releases that pressure so it's way more bearable to deal with and cope with and i think that's what's super nice about comedians and why they're so successful is because they they allow it allows people to relieve that pressure on topics and so when so when society is targeting the comedians and canceling them because of offensive jokes i think it's uh i don't think that's a good thing to do because it's a way for people to relieve that pressure and that um yeah just to relieve the pressure and again it's not like i i I, I guess I can't speak on behalf of comedians or anything, but like, I it's a way. To, it's not to make light of what's going on. You know, it's not to make. Yeah. It's not to, de, devalue the importance of something. But the jokes yeah. are there to, make it. Bearable or like to give it yeah. some sense of humanity too, in a way like. Um, yeah, like like people. It seems like people are just like. Like, when I think about people who get, like, super offended by jokes, and, like, like, like I'll even give it to them, like, there are some jokes that I, like, I'll say, like, okay, yeah, it's, like, too far, like, mm-hmm. right too much. But at the same time, like, canceling comedians and, like, going after, like, comedy and, uh, like, canceling people for that, it's, like, what, what are you, like, trying to accomplish? Like, do you not want anything to be funny? Like, do you, mm. you just want the driest jokes possible, like... Um, like I don't, I don't know like it's it's like it's like it seems like they just want to be stressed like they just want to like be so tensed up with like certain issues they don't want anything like like no this is a major problem we can't like just just be all tense about it like yeah it's kind of fine to like just cancel someone for like yeah like a comedian like kevin hart like the, the, that movie i watched i was like he can, he like he didn't bring it up like an excessive amount but he brought it up a few times and it was just like this isn't like funny because he. D- it seems like he's being restricted, and he's even in his own house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, like it just felt like he was just restricting himself because he's like, Afraid. I just have to watch every single thing I say because I don't want to get canceled. Like that's the problem with cancel culture is, you force people to watch like every single word that comes out of their mouth, and whether like honestly, what it should be is, I kind of have a feeling that cancel culture is a like bad mutation of trying to get people to have a verbal filter if you will like i kind of feel like it was meant to be something that okay everyone should like watch what they say and just be like more respectful which is fine like but everyone should definitely like, have a filter, but wait what but it, it, as anything it had some extremists that are just taking it too far yeah exactly. And like that's where we're at right now is we're at the extremist verbal filtration, if you will. Like, mm-hmm. you literally cannot say a single thing that's even a little bit offensive without yeah, just like, being. It's is that if even if you show criticism against a ideology, you're automatically labeled an enemy, a disturber of the peace type deal. Like yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's like, not it's, like the premise of cancel. Society. Yeah, I think the premise of cancel culture is actually a very positive thing. You know, I mean, it does. Oh yeah, it, it puts people in line. You know, um, yeah, like exactly. there, there's a lot of instances where say some celebrities or politicians got canceled that are like, hell yeah, let's let's go as a society. Like, why were we letting that take place in the first place? You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I um, agree. I agree. But then there's stuff like that 
it, it is too far, you know, like, not that comedians should get, like, a pass to do bad things, but, like, also, like, as I was saying, like, co comedians are just there to, like, break that pressure, you know, and, again, it's not like they're making light of the situations, it's just that yeah. the pressure is being broken, and it's, like, say when it comes to, like, racist jokes, from what I have seen, people of all races, even though even the ethnicity like i don't really like the race or the word race but like um of that ethnicity you know that that the jokes being targeted at they even enjoy it because it's like if you can't laugh at yourself you're not going to be able to grow either you know like yeah if 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 a belief you have can't withstand criticism is it really all that true you know like I, as a kid i used to hate jokes that came at me on religion you know everyone knew what church I belonged to and they would always crack jokes at it and at when I was young I was always offended I was like hey man don't be saying that okay like I didn't have a defense or anything but as I grew up I'm like I, I joke about it myself all the time I'm, it's just yeah like, yeah I, like, I kind of do the same yeah it's and, like it, it was like kind of annoying back then because it was like you didn't have a response but then as you like grow you realize like a joke is a joke like mm -hmm. and even if they even if they are like maybe serious it's like well, that just shows like their poor character of like they have to make fun of you and they mm -hmm. they don't have character themselves to like break it off of. Yeah, like, like, it's, like I uh, forgive me if I'm wrong on this, but I think it there's like two impl implications. If you can't take a joke about yourself in any I sense, like any identity of yourself, you know, whether it's a physical identity or like how you mentally identify, if you can't take a joke about it. It shows how self con. I th I think it shows how self conscious and how weak minded you are in it. Like you're not even that confident in yourself that you can't withstand a joke that's happening. Um, yeah. Like I like for instance, remember how skinny and small I was like starting high school. I was like four nine five one, going into high school when I was skinny as heck. And I used to always be annoyed when people would point out, oh, you're so skinny. And I would always be like, no, I couldn't tell, you know, like I was generally offended at first. But like as I grew, grew up, I was just like, like I didn't really have like a good response or anything. But like I would, I just like laughed whether or not I was offended. Like I was able to laugh at it just because it was like, it showed those people that I wasn't self-conscious about my body, that they couldn't hurt me. And so people like stopped bullying me because I was small just because they saw, or I would crack the jokes myself, you know, um, kind of like how I did earlier, how I was saying like, yeah, I mean, it was one thing I don't want to get in a fight because it's an altercation, but it's another because the guys are like twice my size, you know, like I'm able, yeah. to, I'm able to laugh at myself. I'm able to laugh at my own beliefs and stuff. Not that I, not that it makes me believe less, but it shows that there's, that I have a st strength in that belief, you know, that there's a truth in that belief that I, pers that I find to be a personal truth. And I, and you see that in a lot of people too, like the people who enjoy those comedies and stuff, like they're able to laugh at those things because they have the, uh, you could say mental capacity, but they have the strength to. Um, and I, I think that's something that it seems like a lot of people are lacking now is cause it's like, uh, that term, like safe space, you know, like school isn't a safe space or something like, I think like bullying wouldn't be a thing if you, people weren't so self-conscious either. So I, I, I can't, I don't really want to actually say that, but because, I mean, there's all sorts of forms of bullying, you know, for yeah, me, yeah, for I, me. I, I would say, like, it, there's, there's a lot of different, like, I think there's a difference, there, there's a line between, like, actually, like, bullying and, like, making jokes, I guess. Yeah, like, I think there's, I like, if you could put it in three categories, not that there is three categories, I think you have bullying or, like, offend, per, like, intentional offense. Or yeah, offending. like trying to cause harm type yeah. of thing. Then you have teasing and then you have like literally it's just friends because I know both me and you can laugh at it, you know, like yeah. um I I have some I have some ethnic friends that I play games with all the time and we're just hounding at each other, but it's all in fun and games, you know. It's not Yeah. Like if I was genuinely a racist, I wanna 
be playing games with these guys like they're some of my best friends i love their company and yeah. if we just have a great time and like it's almost like we get enjoyment out of how clever of like sayings we can come up with you know like yeah we, we just say some like just how wild out of place or just how clever something is man it it makes those jokes ever more funny like the random things people have said um like one of them was like shut up taylor you look like a wee remote to me and i just <laughs> I, did, I just thought that was too good i was like man that like it, it low-key hurt but like at the same time i was like dude that was that was too clever like <laughs> it's too good um kind of how like uh you and like i think it was sophomore year you guys always called me french fry and stuff oh, like yeah, that yeah. you know like I, I think there's something awesome about the about like how clever and things like that is and i think that's why i enjoy comedy too is because on a lot of like and that's also like why you know there's like the dry comedy it's because it's not even like it's not clever and like comedian it yeah it's, it's like not a man. unique way you know it's like yeah. they're relying on is I think there's a difference between the joke being funny or the topic being funny, you know, like, um, the topic, it, like some comedians rely on the topic, like, Oh, everyone thinks, uh, everyone thinks Kevin Hart's funny. So let's crack some jokes at Kevin Hart, but if they're not cleverly thought out or unique, no one's going to laugh at them. They're just simply relying on the subject of the joke. And I don't yeah. think, like, say, when it comes to some racist jokes that comedians make, it's not that they're relying on the racist part. It's they're relying on the clever, like, hey, there's that kind of unique, like, hey, I see that too. I'm going to laugh at it type, you know? It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not like, uh, like, say the, say, like, the Wii remote it doesn't rely solely on the fact that I'm skinny because they could have just said, hey, you're skinny, you know? It's more like or like white and skinny. It wasn't that they were relying on my body stature and my skin tone. It was how clever of it, of it, it was, you know, it wasn't, they didn't just simply say, Oh, you're white and skinny. It was like, Oh, you're a Wii remote. And that's why I thought it was so funny. And I yeah. didn't take offense. I was like, dang, that was like genuinely good. You know, like I, th and yeah. that's where the good comedy comes in, I think. And that's how that pressure is relieved as we were talking about earlier. And I think that's where it's, it's really good there. And so, yeah, no, um, yeah, I agree. I like how you brought up the, like, there's like, there's kind of different, what'd you call it? Like categories of like a joke. Whatever, uh, yeah. What, yeah. A joke. Like one is like actually bullying, like you're trying to cause oh, harm. Yeah. And, and like the teasing, which is like, you're kind of just saying it just to try to get a reaction type thing. Mm -hmm. Like what good or bad. Like, and then that's kind of with like, you're like trying to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Like with teasing. You can tell a lot, like, there's that thing, like, you can tell if someone's just kind of a bad person. I, I don't know if that's the right way you phrase it, but, like, you know how there's people who will, they'll say something, and then they'll respond to what they said based off how the group acts. So, say, if you're in a party yeah. and you crack a joke and say it's, like, kind of offensive, if everyone laughs, you start laughing. But if if the everyone's, like, offended, you're like, hey, or you're like, yeah, sorry, that was, like, a that wasn't even funny, was it? Or something, you know, like, you react... You're solely going for a reaction, and I think that's where the teasing category is, is you're looking for a reaction in someone, and so if yeah, they exactly. laugh, it's a positive teasing, because, like, you both can laugh about it, but if they don't laugh and they take offense, then it's on the other side, like, teasing is 50-50, then you have the fun, like, harmless stuff, and then you have the bullying, offensive, insulting stuff. And like when you tease, it can fall under either category. And that's where those people are like, they wait to see the reaction and then they um, correct themselves based on it. So if the teasing ends up being funny, then everyone has a good time. But if the teasing ends up being offensive, then they react accordingly. Like, hey, I was just joking. Don't tell on me type deal, you know? And like, I don't think it's bad to tease personally, because it's also a way to judge what other people's capabilities are, you know, like. Um, yeah, like you're really with other people yeah or like i think with those friends of mine on um xbox and stuff uh i th i think it was and to say like even my roommates that i had um while at school three of them were from nigeria and they would always they always just call me white boy <laughs> um but like i i think it was they they started with teasing and i would even start with teasing on them like we would both tease each other 
to test each other's boundaries and when it would go negative it wasn't like we were so solely looking for that reaction but it's a way for us to um judge like oh i i know that specific route they 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 don't like it i didn't get a positive response from it and so i know not to do that unless i'm trying to instigate something which um that kind of comes down to your character as a person too and that's where yeah. i say like i i'm not i'm never looking for that um instigate that conflict but it's it falls under that same print i think it kind of falls under that same premise though you know like just me and those roommates or me and my friends they they would tease with me and they would see if i got a positive or negative and if it was negative i would tell them like and they would even tell me you know like if you go too far you they usually tell you like hey dude knock that off you know and then you know not to go that far but even then it could depend on the day as well and so like you try it again another time and then you get a positive reaction and then you guys know that you're both comfortable with going that far and so then you're yeah. able to then the judge that they're able to say oh you look yeah. like a re remote <laughs> you know and yeah. so um there's there's quite a few funny like it, it's a way yeah. to bond and i and so i don't think teasing is truly that bad of a deal and again if someone has a disagreement with that or disagrees with me on teasing let, i'd love to hear it you know but yeah. I, I i think and for all i know i have a whole different definition for teasing you know and it might i might not yeah. even be talking about teasing but that's how i see it is it's it's a yeah. way to test the boundaries of someone and then yeah. there's like our friend john who i just or dog on all the time so yeah. but sorry john. yeah sorry john if you're watching but yeah it. i actually that's actually like a great time to like cancel cultures i think i think society would be like well society would be super well off if if we all simply went off like something along those lines like you watch what you say around people and like if you get really friendly with people you obviously like test the waters like okay like what can i say and what can i say because obviously we all have like different humor and we all have like different like views mm -hmm. and so like i think me and you would agree like there are definitely like some people have views that offend people although it, whether it's dumb or not that's like another conversation to get offended by like a view but i think there are some uh like jokes that some people would actually take offense to and i think society would be better off with the you get friendly with someone and then you like you like test like the humor side and i think where cancel culture comes in and it cancel culture ruins all that is instead of like getting feedback on whether what you said was really like an offensive joke or like a genuinely offensive thing is cancel culture immediately like cancels you. You're like, yeah, no, you're done. Like, yeah, you out. don't, you don't get a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get like a second chance. There's, there's no like trying to fix it. And, and I think the other side of cancel culture where we've kind of been like focusing on humor is the like cancel culture of like views and stuff. And like, just kind of like, like morality, which, cancel culture should not be a part of like um your personal views like at all unless it's clearly like it leads to like the downfall or like the genocide of like a group of people obviously you know but just like like economic views or like social views or like stuff like that like cancel culture is just so destructive towards like those views but yeah to tie it in with like humor which we've been talking about yeah um cancel culture kind of just ruins like the humor side because you can't really you don't get a second chance there's no like testing like the teasing like you're talking about. there's no like testing to see if okay like can i say this joke can i say like this joke type mm -hmm. of thing yeah but obviously like, i think we both agree like there are jokes that go too far and of course there should be people who are like yeah that's like offensive like don't do that joke mm -hmm. type of thing. it's also weird too because like sometimes when the joke does go too far I feel like it also depends on the buildup. So say if a joke's like 80% too far, but like you've already built it up. So I think it's if it goes from zero to 80, that's when it's bad. But I think say if the audience you're talking to, if you slowly build up, so they go from zero to 10% and then 10 to 20 until you reach 80, I think that could be positive. But that's also where like the outside viewers who 
cause the cancel culture they see it from zero to a hundred rather than be built yeah, exactly. to it and see that it's all in in fun you know um yeah like kind of an I, example it's probably not a good example but like there's a comedian i i genuinely enjoy his name's andrew schultz um like so, there's one video uh i think it was doing stuff on like the polynesian islands and stuff but like and he was in hawaii doing it and it was it was funny to me um, cause he started off with these jokes and everyone was just like looking around, like Did this guy really just say that they're all like looking around. There's like maybe one or two chuckle and he didn't even care. He just kept going. And then everyone's like starts to laugh and then he just keeps going. And everyone, and everyone's like, man, this guy's still really going at it. But they also can tell he doesn't actually mean that offense. You know, as I said, it's a comedian just breaking that pressure in people. And that's why those public viewings that's why they're so popular in the public is because the public or society the society they just need that break from the tense tension of the world and so he was saying these jokes and again at first they were all just like is this for real but then at the end of the video they're all having a blast like even the people who like he targeted multiple people and i mean it was hawaii so there's quite a bit of island ethnicities there and he was he was mainly cracking jokes at that kind of stuff and it was them who at first were just kind of like hmm but some of them as i said chuckled but at the end all of them were like standing up and giving him applause just because it was clever it wasn't coming out of yeah. insult it was on the teasing friendly side not the teasing in offense yeah. side and so everyone was able to tell that and that's also what makes a good comedian i think too is because they're able to portray that too. I mean, if you have a straight face and you're saying some racist stuff, you know, everyone's going to be like, Oh, this guy's just fuck this guy. Let's get him out of here. You know, but like, yeah. but like, well, I think, I, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is like your, your zero to 80 thing, like gradually building it usually shows that like, yeah, I'm joking. Like I'm mm -hmm. saying this like to like, cause it's funny and like, it's a funny thing. I'm trying to get a reaction. That's like a friendship. Like we're friends. Like, I'm not like I don't mean it. This is just like for fun type thing. Yeah. And I think like a big thing like you're talking about like in society is like I think people just take it like super seriously. And honestly, there are some people who say it seriously, and like those are the people like should be canceled. Like we kind of said at the start, like there there's, are definitely people who have been canceled. Yeah, there are people who have been like canceled that definitely should have been canceled. But then there's times where like people just take something that someone says is like way too serious or just way out of context and it's mm -hmm. like okay like one thing that one like scenario that can happen and it has happened is like say say a comedy or a comedian says something and in the video and everything you can see it but then say a news a article comes out and it's just a picture of the comedian and then a quote of the joke if you just see that where you like the words but you don't see a facial expression you don't see body language you don't see how the crowd's reacting you don't see his yeah. initial intent that's i think that's where a lot of cancel culture comes in because like you see that often in media you know like someone's giving a speech and in one sentence they're like they say something like i don't know i don't have an example but say they're like uh chocolate candy is a great candy and then the next sentence they're like uh white chocolate is pretty good and then an article comes out that just solely says etc said white chocolate is pretty good are they racist you know and then everyone's like cancel him let's do this you know like they, yeah, they jump I on it without even knowing what the guy said two seconds before like they they just nitpick everything and i think that's where it's bad but then if like you saw the whole video and you saw that he was actually like oh i prefer white chocolate because of its color and then everyone's like yeah let's cancel this guy he doesn't get a further than yeah and that's a pretty bad example but um no yeah i mean yeah yeah that makes sense yeah, terrible example, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what I can even say for an example either, so. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that works, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anything else you have to say for cancel culture? No, I, I think, 
I've said everything I wanted to say about cancel culture. Again, if like anyone has anything about cancel culture they want to talk about or like totally disagrees, that's even better. Yeah. Um, and there's like stuff that I, I know, like even right now I could delve into, but I also want to save those for other times. And I especially yeah. want to, there's a lot of stuff I want to save for you guys when you want to come on and talk with us too. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. Cause like some examples of cancel culture is like, and I don't want to delve into it here, but it's just something to look forward to down the road. Um, like, uh, and I think this was a positive cancel culture, um, regardless of what the topic is. But like J.K. Rowling has been canceled a few times on like homophobic stuff, transphobic stuff, whole other things. Um, regardless of the topic, like the those are instances where it easily could be both good and bad. And so like yeah. stuff like that, even like. Um, how people view those specific topics that those are topics I, I want to go into on another time, but I don't think we're going to have that time for today, especially with our oh, last yeah. topic that we're going to go into, but um, just something to look forward for other shows. And so, um, no, it, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think the other big thing about like what we're doing too is like with like cancel culture, but just kind of in general is like whoever, like anyone who wants to like come on, like it just helps us dive in deeper and like, really get into this stuff so that's why we that's why we started it is to like mm -hmm. get into the topics with people and hear other views but anyways anyways because yeah, i mean this, this is kind of already how we talk when we just play video games and that's why we're like yo you know what let's get let's have other people listen and yeah. something that we again that idea that you guys come on and talk with us whether you're wanting to change our view or you want us to change your view or challenge your view or something anything like again like um we just want to emphasize this is a safe space like it's it's we're not if we even if we disagree and stuff we're not going to try and put you in your place we're not going to put a video of like oh fluid perception owned etc you know we're not going to yeah. do that um, we, don't want it. We, we definitely just want to have healthy discussions and this is yeah. just for everyone even uh, people who have who say if you disagree on every single point that we made like this is for you guys too and we'd love yeah, for you like, to well actually probably specifically for them. yeah <laughs> yeah you know it, like, it, it, if... people who disagree and people who want to talk about like a different topic that we haven't talked about yeah so. yeah because if you agree with us what are we going to talk about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unless you have <laughs> i guess something they're gonna they're gonna come on and be like yeah i don't think uh i don't think video games relates to violence we're gonna be like okay nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah um but like at the same time they could like a nice thing about that is you might have a good defense for for yeah. like you might have a good defense for what we've already talked about and you agree with us and you want to share that defense for both yeah. us and yeah. other people who share the opinion you know because like one thing is like when i was growing up like say on my beliefs i didn't have defense against a, quite a few things but i've come up with my own answers as well as listen to other people so I can yeah. broaden my perspective, my perception of the things. And that's what's yeah. made it sh such a sh strong uh, ideal for me. And so that's, yeah. there's a lot of things that we'd love to talk about. So again, don't, don't hesitate to get a hold of us. Um, whether that's, we should probably drop the email for this, like a business email, but whether that's on yeah. our email yeah. that we'll, we'll put in, um, one thing or even we, just comment on like the youtube yeah you comment on the youtube um one yeah. thing i we need to put a link to this discord because we have um just a normal chat channel where you can chat with people about topics oh, okay. you know have your own discussions yeah. and then we have a whole channel for topics where you can leave your topic and what and like aspects of the topic you want us to discuss and so um we'll put the discord in uh, the discord link there as well um but Unless you have anything last real quick, we'll move on no, to yeah, the next I'm topic. Good. I'm good. We can go on. Okay, so our last topic, it pertains to pretty much everything we've already been talking about, and we could have easily transitioned to it, but I think it does deserve its own thing. It's just a, it's a, about opinions and how um, disagree, people who have, and it kind of pertains to what we do or what we're hoping to do here is it's how people disregard opinions of disagreeing people or people in a different position than them and i was emphasizing this at the very beginning how um 
like outside of the bubble the the opinions outside of the bubble still matter and yeah I, this is in defense of that for from my perspective and obviously yeah. it's not in 100 percent defense or anything but like it's uh like a common thing i see is a celebrity voices their opinion on a, pol a political thing and for all i i don't really care about a celebrity's opinion but i don't think people should be like hey you're a celebrity you don't get an opinion because you have it better than us and that's something i see commonly um happen is a celebrity shows support for one political party or support for a country or something random you know and they're just like hey you, you live a better lifestyle than us so you don't get a say type deal but their opinion matters too yeah. and saying yeah. that is a very bad thing and it also goes for like poor like the impoverished pe population um like it seems like a lot of snobby people will disregard what the local population has to say as well like you'll see yeah. like city council meetings happen and people from the bad side of town want to voice their opinions because obviously their their side of town is what's getting the hard butt of things but they're just like there's just the stupid stereotype walls that happen and they they're just like uh we don't care about their opinion because they can't d take yeah. care of themselves I, I i i hate that um and so that's something that this last topic is going to be about um yeah and just just to kind of like reiterate what you said this is like a really good outro to like this video because it goes over kind of everything mm -hmm. and kind of my side of it is taylor kind of said how celebrities will be like oh well you live a different lifestyle you're rich so you can't really have an opinion on this mm -hmm. um i see it from that side but i also see it from the side like some celebrities they'll take a side and like everybody just jumps on that opinion yeah and says oh yeah that's so true be because they're like a big like lebron james fan or they're a big like i don't even know like taylor swift fan i don't care any 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 celebrity and they just hop on that opinion because yeah like, like uh a like common... nobody wants to form their own opinion type of thing. like and i think that's a big societal like issue like people are like forming opinions off um like solely off other people's opinions and although like that's good like obviously you, you have to form opinion based off other people's opinions it shouldn't be like oh i love lebron james so i'm gonna take this side because he does it should be like okay i've heard this opinion i've heard this opinion i want to form my own opinion which is what me and taylor are trying to do is provide like the map and let you figure it out for yourself type of thing mm -hmm. although we obviously have bias and you've probably seen in the last hour we've been talking that we clearly have bias but i don't think yet i try to convince I, anyone yeah i would say it's not a negative bias either because i mean it's kind of hard to not have bias without yeah, being you're monotone without being a necessity like it's I think there's a necessity amount of bias that's needed and it's not like we're trying yeah. as i said we're not any discussion even things we side with we're not going to try and convince you and we truly want people who disagree with us because we also want to see that side like and that's that's going to play into this opinion thing is this um one thing is uh i, I tend to see happen on say social media people will say on instagram say a conservative will follow conservative pages and a liberal will follow liberal pages, but they won't follow the opposite. And it's just because they like to see that like-minded um, views. And I, I think that's not that great of an idea because you only see that side of things. And so you don't have, like when, uh, when an idea from the opposing side comes up and you've never seen it before, you don't really have a good argument against it because you don't even know what it's about. I think, um, like one thing I've done is I've put the, I've, I follow more of the opposite views of what I share because it allows me to see that. And I actually tend to find a lot of them like, wow, I, I like what that says, you know, maybe not to the full extent, but I mean, I don't think anything is as black as white. Like just because I agree with this thing means I have to disagree with this. I don't think anything in this world should be black and white like that um, which that's a whole yeah. another topic we're gonna talk about another time it's just how people see the world in black and white and why i i yeah. why i believe that's a bad thing um but I, yeah there's something like when people are like let's take out that 
plus or when they say a celebrity shouldn't share their opinion i think it's a really bad thing because it gives you insight to their point of view and as i said even the opinions outside of your bubble matter and whether or not yeah. they you agree with them is another thing but it's just like so you can see what other people are going what they have so you can put yourself in their shoes and their point of view and i think that yeah. again since the beginning of this that's a big important thing in discussions is that sort of empathy or just that way that people put themselves in other shoes so they can relate to what's going on um mm -hmm. yeah just to another thing with that is um I think social media is a big platform for like misinformation, especially with like opinions and stuff. And, um, actually I called Taylor the other day about this, about like, um, I was on, I was on Twitter, just like on Twitter and just for the record, I freaking hate Twitter. Like Twitter, it has to be like the worst place on planet Earth. It, it is just full of so much like misinformation and like misleading. I, I just hate it. It like, it's, uh, like Jordan Peterson says it like incentivizes, what does he say? It's incentivizes, uh, uh, what's it called when you're uh, when you do something like super fast without thinking impulsion Impuls yeah like, yeah twitter incentivizes being impulsive towards um like throwing people under the bus basically but anyway i was i was like on twitter and i saw this like stat on um like covid and it was just this girl who basically just whipped out a stat on uh, like the deaths from COVID a day. And there was like no context behind it. There was no like anything. It was just like put there as if it was like a like factual piece of information. And it like really aggravated me because there was like no context. Like it, it didn't have any, any like information on like what the numbers actually were, like the deaths from COVID. Like if they were strictly from COVID, if they like involved, um, you know, like a complication with something else or anything like that. And it was like comparing the deaths of COVID to like other United States tragedies, like nine 11 and Pearl Harbor. And it like, it just aggravated me because it was, she essentially like, it was super easy to do. Like you could have easily looked up the numbers to the deaths on a certain day from COVID and just slapped it in with like nine 11 and COVID or sorry, nine 11 and like Pearl Harbor and other like terrible days in the United States history and just, put it on social media as if it was a fact and like so many people liked it and retweeted as and i was it just kind of aggravated me and i called taylor about it because it was like like people really you like you can have just such a popular opinion that when you put it out anybody and everybody who has that same opinion just jump on will, it will jump on it yeah and at the expense of like manipulating facts to make it seem like that opinion just is even more like true mm -hmm. and like it was super aggravating. I was like, this is just so dumb. Yeah. And I'm, I challenged that too. I was, I, I don't remember how I challenged it, but it was kind of like, well, I mean, um, I agree. I agreed with him because it didn't look, it didn't seem like much thought was put into it or much, um, intention was put into it besides to just compare it to another tragedy. But yeah. I also agreed with it in the sense like, I mean, it is trying to show how important of a situation the COVID-19 is and the pandemic is. Yeah. And, but I agreed with you on the fact that it was a poor way of doing it. Um, yeah. It wasn't well thought out. It didn't have that strong, it didn't have a, even a mediocre foundation for it to be built upon or premised on. Um, and it, it appeared like it was making light of, the tragedy other tragedies in united states history you know it, it yeah it wasn't a smart or well thought out comparison to from yeah. my view but i knew i i knew what they were trying to get at and that i re i respected because and yeah. it's something that is that needs to be um spread like made aware but not in the way that it was made aware and that's what you that's what i believe you were getting at it wasn't exactly the exact like stats that were going on it was the way it was going about and how false information can be so easily shared in general, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was in no like, way like, like think I, of... I wasn't like, I wasn't like denouncing the, the numbers itself. Like I, I was like, I think I even told you like, if these numbers are correct, like fine, but like you have to put context behind like a number such as like 
deaths from like a disease, especially mm-hmm. like when you're comparing it to something like Pearl Harbor and 9-11, like you, you have, you have like a lot of explaining to do when you compare something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I remember you made the point like, uh, like the deal with Pearl Harbor and 9-11 was the amount of time it happened in two because they generalized everything into the day. But like, um, say 9-11, like the death rate was within an hour or two that everything happened. And then yeah. say Pearl Harbor was like a four hour attack. I, I don't personally know. Um, feel free to correct me on that. Um, but like, it, but yeah. it was like kind of the time frame too that was being compared. Yeah. Um, not again, it's not like trying to take away the importance of those, but the specific way it was portrayed, the picture I saw, I, I do, I, it, it was, it was a bad way of portraying it. Um, yeah. like an example of this I can think of, and this kind of ties into the cancel culture thing. De, uh, it was Demi Lovato. She got canceled quite a few times since I was like nine or 10, I believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. um, like there was one time where there was an account of hers that was, uh, insulting Selena Gomez or something like that. And she got canceled because of it. But it turned out that the account wasn't even hers or had any association with hers. It was a fake account that just started doing terrible things in her name and it got her canceled. And everyone on Twitter was all behind it. And that's something that as that kind of ties into that point, like how Twitter or just social media for in, in general, how people are so quick to, um, they just see something that even Re- reflects a hint of what they want to believe or a point they want to get across so they just quickly share it and spread it around and it causes a lot of problems that way um, like there's been politicians that have been like kicked out of office for stuff they never like said on social media because other people said it and then everyone's just quick and that's where that negative part of cancel culture even kicks in or connects to all of this um, but like there's a but yeah, like, I mean, that negatively affected Demi Lovato. Um, not that I think of her as any ideal or anything. I truly don't even know much about her. I just know about that situation. But um, that whole premise of how social media is so quick to share opinions and also yeah. so quick to shut down opinions. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that, that's, that's like the biggest thing is like, it seems like that's another major like societal issue is the fact that it seems like some opinions are superior to other opinions, Mm -hmm. which again goes back to like what we're even doing is like, we don't want to see the superiority of like certain opinions. Obviously there's going to be a superiority in like population of opinions. So like the amount of people that have a certain opinion, well, there might be a superiority in like the number, but there shouldn't be a culture of, of destroying an opinion because you don't like it type of thing. Yeah. And I think kind of what we're going with like this topic is, just because you have an opinion and you like you get a lot of retweets on it doesn't mean it's like factually correct type of thing Mm -hmm. or as the general population like agrees you doesn't mean it's factually correct it does mean like i will side with the part of if you have an opinion that is uh, the most popular it's it's going to be the most popular like it's that's going to be like the truth in quotation marks but it doesn't mean that's like a factual piece of evidence. Yeah. Um, I kind of think of all the fake Twitters that try and portray themselves as the real ones, like the Donald Trump Twitter that isn't his. I mean, his actual Twitter is still pretty wild in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> yeah. There's like the fake ones that say so much. Like I, I, I genuinely enjoy them. I think they're funny, but like a lot of people think like that's genuinely the president saying stuff, but it's yeah. like the clever thing is, this is not so far fre- fetched from what the president would say. And I think that's yeah. what's so <laughs> funny about it. Um, but like yeah. still like people are like, this is our president type deal. And they're so yeah. quick to hop on that or like same thing with other politicians or celebrities and stuff um they're so quick to hop on to things and i think like a bad a messed up thing or uh, i mean it's not really messed up but how often things get blown out of proportion or over analyzed thought whatever like uh a celebrity could show support in something and then someone finds this thing about what they're supporting and like say one thing like people are so quick to uh 
blow up or so quick to concentrate on one bad thing rather and ignore all the positives, which that's another, that's a topic we really want to go in depth in on another time. But just in general, like uh, that tends to happen with opinion, like opinions and stuff like that. Like you have an opinion on a certain subject, but that subject involves one of like another, um, like behind it has a door of, behind a door of it there's another thing that you don't like and so you blow that up you find like the smallest uh weaknesses and you blow it up so it's outweighs yeah. all the good and it, it's i don't think it's a bad thing i yeah. just don't think it's I, an ideal thing either just because no, yeah. you could do a hundred good things in your life but one bad thing and people will only remember you for the bad thing and it it's both a yeah. sad but I, there's also good in it and again I, that's something i want to dive into on another time um yeah yeah i the, yeah i think like the biggest topic i like talking about with this topic is like the celebrities and like people who seem to be like in control of like the majority of opinions which is usually like politicians and like celebrities and mm -hmm. people is like it shouldn't i hate how like it seems like today everybody has either one or the other type of opinions like it's it's either you side with this or you side with that and it seems like everybody's just like clones of each other and it all kind of it always seems to stem from like politicians and like celebrities in my opinion at least yeah like they all have the same one the same type of opinion so they post and then the other side uh celebrities and politicians they post the same type of stuff and everybody's like oh yeah this oh yeah this and like that's where like I hope me and Taylor like can come in and like, okay, well maybe we don't like either of these, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe we don't like either of the opinions. Like maybe we want to do like all of the opinions. And even if me and Taylor like have biases towards one side or the other, we want the other side and we want like the middle and we want our side. Like we, we want to be like the place where opinions, like we don't care what your opinion is. We just want to hear your opinion. We want to like, yeah. discuss it. And we also want you to feel like you can voice your opinion, you know? Um, yeah. And, like, we hope that this gets big. We really do. Like, I think it would be awesome if people even around the world, like, saw this and wanted to be a part of it. Um, yeah. And I, I think, I, I personally just think the whole idea of it is rather beautiful, even if there's already other people doing it out there. Like, I, I, like, I, I, hope, I, people, I like, hope people like us keep doing it. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. like, it's like, Imagine, like, like think about, like think about, uh, dude. I'm getting, I'm getting into this, bro. <laughs> dude, like think about, a, like a society specifically in the United States because I think it's a major. But think of a society where, like, social media and like, uh, news networks, are like obsolete, and even social media doesn't have to be obsolete. But specifically, like news media and like, because imagine if they're obsolete, there'd be no like bias there would obviously be like bias but not in like news places like for us like obviously we don't give out news but we're like the place where we give out opinions and give out like um sources of opinions because we're a source of an opinion similar to like a news network where they give out their own opinions on stuff so imagine if like they were obsolete and of course like if that were to happen it would be so unbiased in like the country that like i guess i shouldn't say unbiased because there's going to be bias like like we kind of said but there'd be so much more like unity i guess is what i'm looking for because i i am like i am like i swear i'm like the number one uh number one like proponent of like news networks being the reason that the united states is like divided and like people in general around the world why they're divided is because of news they cause like that they just cause such a divide like Oh yeah, come watch us, and we're just gonna feed you like this opinion, and the other side's the same way, and so yeah, I could yeah, like try like, to get big. It'd be one thing, cool. it'd be like I don't know if it would be a good thing or not. I'm, there's a, obviously only one, or there's a few ways to tell, but um, I don't know that I fully agree with you on that. Though I will, I'm sorry to admit this, I kind of zoned out during that, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably have to just rewatch it. Um, but like, say if news media is stopped with the politics, but kept with actual news, like, oh, the dam in yeah. Utah yeah. just yeah, broke, or the dam in, or like, 
tornadoes that just ran through Washington, D.C. All the politicians yeah. are dead, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, like, like, news like that, like, genuine news besides politics. So, like, um, I guess in the unbiased way, just simply be like, Biden's winning in the Trump, or in the Trump, in the polls, or Trump's winning in the polls. Like, just simple information would be nice. And going into detail would be nice, but the um, fabrication of it is what's really bad, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. I, I agree with that. Yeah, and uh, as we've said before, a lot of these topics we want to talk about more at a later time, and one of them is how, like, it goes, it connects into, like, seeing the world in black and white. It connects to races, ethnicities, and stuff. It, it, it does appear like the media is instigating a lot of these racial um, problems that are going on, prejudices, and I, it would be nice to see that be put to a stop. I kind of sound like a conspiracy theorist, but like from the amount I've seen, it's something I can't say I can deny because of yeah what I have seen on it. You know, it seems like there really is like there's not naturally a race war because I mean there wasn't like people back in the day didn't fight each other just because of the color of their skin. They were fighting each other for multiple reasons, land, um, not exactly culture. like ethnicity, yeah, culture and stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's another, <laughs> there's so many topics, but yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. there, it, it just seems like there is something going on there. So with social media and everything, I would just say, be careful about it all. Even like take what we say with a grain of salt, if that's the right saying, yeah. like don't, don't just be so quick to hop on what we what we're talking about either you know like even what we're just what we just said like don't be so quick to be like oh yeah maybe there is like a race war being instigated type of stuff um really think it out through yourself voice it through us even if you want um talk with us and we just hope everyone to help everyone get opinions whether they are with us or against us on set opinions and it even be i think it would be almost a testament to what we're doing if half of the topics you do agree with us on and half of them you don't because that just shows that there's a good balance and it's not black and white like if you disagree with us on one thing you disagree with us on everything but rather like there's a genuine balance there because i don't think it's solely one side or the other side and anything which also like it's not just solely good against evil it's like there's evil in good there's malevolence in the in good and stuff like that you know and there's good and the bad and heck like that ties into what we were saying about video games earlier too but yeah i think just with everything just um make sure you when you when you form your opinions just make sure you have enough integrity for it and are able to have a strong basis for it and also i think with any any view that you've come up with just be open-minded at it always know always have the suspicion that there's someone out there who knows more than you and yeah that's what we're hoping for here is we hope there's so many people that have more than us that way they can talk with us and help us expand because this isn't just for you guys i i think this will be very nice for me and tristan or tristan and i yeah. that way we can grow too because yeah talking to the and same even, yeah i think even if like a lot of whoever's watching or whoever watches like doesn't have a strong opinion i think that's good too because like honestly there's only like a, probably a handful of subjects me and Taylor have like a strong opinion on. And like, uh, there'll definitely be like episodes that we do where we talk about something where we don't really have a strong opinion on something. So like our conversation will probably go like something like, I don't know. It'll, it'll go something like we go back and forth on like random ideas about it, but we don't have like an opinion on it, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. that's where then the viewers come in of voice your opinion. So like we can, either walk it through with you and then for the the ones that we have strong opinions on but you might not have the strongest opinion on like that's okay too and then yeah like of something, course, that, something that would be nice both um with and against us on our views is like say like there is something that you agree with us on and but like say you don't have enough defense for it or like or surety even like or even it, you you feel like you do but then we say something about it and it just helps you with your view and you're just like oh wow i could use that like i see how that i can implement that already in my um testimony of that view or position 
or even it's the opposite. We say something that you don't like and you're just like, you know what, that just helped me with my view. Like you, it, because of what you said there, even though I didn't agree with it, it helped me in a different way. Like it showed me that I didn't like that either type deal. Um, and so that I feel like this will just be a good way for both us and you guys to really um, shape our opinions and just our viewpoints and continue to have a healthy discussion on all things. And I hope this grows as a community because I think that would be awesome. People, more people would want to join in and just imagine like a community where people can have healthy discussions, even if it's disagreements, have healthy disagreements. And it's just like the talk of the town, you know, just people are like, hey, let's go talk on food perception about this because we know we're not going to be shamed for our views or anything like that. And so, yeah, yeah, I think that's like the biggest thing is Mm -hmm. like a place where a place where like opinions can just be like flowing really is as Mm. and like with like no backlash and of course like we'll obviously be monitoring like backlash if there's a lot of people in like comments backlashing because that's like obviously something we do not want we don't want it like a second twitter at all yeah and yeah so but yeah the biggest thing is like keep an open opinion like with this whole opinions topic we've been going over is like just like form your own opinion and Mm. then and then like express it like like I'll be I'll like be honest like there's opinions on Twitter that like sometimes I just hate but at the end of the day it's like that's like their opinion based on their experiences so I I can't really do anything about it but there is a point when opinions like people seem to take opinions for like factual evidence and that's when it's kind of like too far it's like okay well your opinion like has a certain flaw in it that's like incorrect yeah but it's time there's it's like everyone should be working through like their opinions and like coming up with their own so yeah um unless you have more to say i think we can go ahead and do some closing remarks yeah i'm good okay um so yeah uh if you watched it through all of this uh, i appreciate we appreciate your time um we hope it strikes a positive chord with you and you share it with your friends and stuff and invite them to be a part of the community um i think for as we mentioned earlier, uh, we'll try and set up a bunch of links so that there's multiple ways of communication for us. Um, we'll put in the discord on our YouTube. We'll, I think we'll make like an Instagram account of this just to, and I think there's, is, do you have a TikTok for it? Yeah, there's a TikTok. I'll post, I already have a video on it, but I'll post, um, uh, I'll post like random clips of like this video and then our next video, which will probably, it'll either be, it'll, I assume we'll do it next week, right? some we'll see we'll yeah, yeah. oh yeah 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 uh we we plan to do it every saturday and if we have if we start getting a lot of people that all want to be a part of it um we'll start implementing it on the weekdays as well but yeah so i th- i think how we're doing it is we're streaming it on saturdays and we'll have the videos uploaded on youtube by sundays so i think tomorrow me and tristan or tristan and i are gonna spend of some of our time tomorrow uploading this stuff um but yeah i think we have the tiktok discord twitch youtube and i think we should make a instagram of our page and we can just post on instagram and yeah. get people involved from there as well because we can yeah. just send the instagram to friends and if um if our view viewer base follows it they can send the instagram to friends that way as well you know and so we yeah. can we can post highlights and stuff if you guys see moments that you like as a highlight just feel free to share it around um again if we got if we get this big that'd be awesome and yeah he- heck if you if you disagree us, with us on the fact of us doing this let us know you know like don't hold oh back. yeah yeah like if someone out there like hates that we're doing this that'd be great to have you on because <laughs> yeah. figure out why you're doing it i mean yeah. that because like, I could see there being like valid reasons as to why we shouldn't do this, but yeah, I mean, don't have your face yeah. on the internet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so. uh, to go with that, yeah, our uh, the Twitch is in our YouTube bio, and um, yeah, of course, if you if you're on Twitch, that's like the, obviously the only way you can like interact with us live. But feel free to interact with us on like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah, alrighty, well. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I think that went pretty well for our first one. I'm going yeah. to head to the gym and 
start looking like a Nintendo Switch rather than a Wii remote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. Much love. See ya.